Hello, good day guys. Welcome to the first class in transmission line. And in this class, I'm going to be talking about the phasor diagram of a short transmission line. First of all, let's represent the circuit model of a short transmission line before we begin to go to the phasor diagram of this line. So first of all, let's represent the circuit model. We already know that a short transmission line have negligible capacitance which means that the capacitance will not be there in the circuit only the inductance and the load so in this case now so this is the sending voltage the sending voltage the voltage that come into the transmission line circuit and this is the resistance of the line and the inductance of the line and this is the current that pass through no current pass this is a series connection so the current will be the same and this is vr vr is the voltage of the load right the voltage of the load so from this equation we can say that this vs is equal to the voltage draw between r and x and also the voltage around this side so we can now imply that Vx, right, because Vs is the input voltage, also known as the sending voltage, is equal to voltage drop between these. And we know that Z is equal to the sum of R plus X, that is the total resistive component. So we can now say, and according to Ohm's law, V is equal to I. I arrow and our arrow here is Z because it contains of two resistive components. So that means that we now have I Z and this voltage of this low will be V arrow, right? So if we, if we go further, that means Vx is equal to V arrow plus I, is it not? Arrow plus I X, right? So that means V arrow plus I arrow I X. So if this is true, we have enough information to draw the phasor diagram of this component. So how do we draw the phasor diagram of this component? Let's go there. <clears throat> First of all, you should know that this transmission line is a lagging transmission line. It's a lagging transmission line. And why is it a lagging transmission line? Very, very easy. You already know this. So it's a lagging transmission line. And in a lagging transmission line, it means that the current will be lagging behind the voltage, right? That means the voltage will delete the current. So when we mean lagging, it means that the current will be down and the voltage will be up. So the voltage is leading the current, so the voltage will be up, leading the current down. So since the current is lagging, that means the voltage is leading. Now, we cannot put um, <coughs> the voltage at this side because all the load here we don't know if it is a purely inductive load so it can't be a purely inductive load so it must lag by an angle so this angle we call it angle phi x call it angle phi x the angle in which the voltage this is descending voltage lags the current which is i will be called what phi be called phi x are you getting it now now let's begin to draw our phasor diagram <clears throat> now we already know from vectors that according to parallelogram law of vectors when we have non-inclined uh, right angle triangle we can also represent a vector like this in which we already know in our basic physics something like this is it not that this is A, B, and C. That implies that the sum of B and C is equal to A. Now, we already know Vx is equal to VR plus VR plus IZ. So the sum of VR and IZ will be equal to X. So let us from here draw the two components in this form that will be equal to Vx. So if I from here now, are we getting it? Draw a line. Are we getting it now? So I draw a line and I call this V arrow. So I need one more component to make it 
um, equivalent to to make it equivalent to give the sum of vx so the component will be in this form i'm getting it now so this side will be called iz you see I'm? so i will name here iz now it means that we just fulfill this equation since ac current is a vector representation so we are presenting the vector so vr plus iz is equal to vx now recall that this same iz i'm getting now this same iz component is equal to i x plus i arrow so it means that i x and i arrow is equal to i z now listen i x is a purely inductive load and i arrow is a purely resistive load so it means that they are not going to bend in any format you know so already we already have a line going like this we already have a line going like this and we say that i arrow is not going to bend now how are we i arrow be i arrow will be in the same phase with the current because a resistance does not lag or the resistor does not lag or lead so it will be in the same component with the current so i arrow this one will be at the flat that like the horizontal component are we getting it now then we already know that inductive load always do what inductive load like to lead yeah inductive load they like to lead the um current by 90. yeah 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 so since we're leading the current it will be up here so we now see i'm getting now we now see that we have two components yeah according to pythagoras theory we just fulfill this vector that this side now name ix right this side name ix and this side name i arrow two of them will give you this iz are we getting it now all right now we should know that there will be an angle here and that angle here will be the same angle here this angle is called i arrow and theta arrow and this angle also will be called theta arrow because of our basic these are what we call i think um corresponding angles in our basic geometry right now let's begin to continue <clears throat> let's begin to continue so yeah is now if, if i extend this component down if i extend this component down it is your first time make sure you watch it is revering calculus on the line we get it now yeah this is will be i arrow now according to vector resolution we already know that when we are resolving vector to the horizontal we have the cos of that vector so this becomes v arrow cos phi arrow and when we are resolving vectors to the vertical we have the sine of that vector that will be v arrow sine phi arrow is it not all right so um also if we want to i get it now also um <clears throat> if you want to resolve this vector are we getting it to this side to this side now like this i r if you want to resolve uh, to this line component only this line component because we'll be seeing the importance of resolving this vector to this line component when we begin to write the equation later this side will be the cause yeah you can try it using your trigonometric knowledge when you put theta here then you put um, i arrow try to resolve it to this side you discover that this will be i arrow cause phi arrow are we getting now then um <coughs> This my guy here has an angle, right? You will see the importance of doing this very soon. And this, according to trigonometry, you can try that. You discover that the angle here also will be phi arrow, right? Already, what is here is i x. So why not resolve i x to find uh, this component? We have i x sine phi 
arrow right okay so i think this is the explanation of this um phasor diagram so what i'm going to do now we are going to be deriving some formulas from this phasor diagram that will enable us to begin to solve a lot of calculations in the future so the first formula we have to derive here is called descending voltage right before we begin to derive descending voltage we let us begin to get familiar with some concept i is called the current are we getting it now i is the current then i arrow means the uh, resistive load drop along the line we already know all those stuff so no need to begin to play around so the sending voltage is called vx the sending voltage vx are we getting it now is equal according to trigonometry this is vx right according to trigonometry this is equal to the square of this and the square of this like this side now from here to this side according to pythagoras so that means that vx vx is equal to vs is the same thing as written oc right oc is equal to the root is it not you know this from our level physics the root of this place now this place is the same thing as what cf is it not right, cf square plus from f to this side now is o f square are we getting it now all right now we already know that cf i'm getting it now cf so that means that vx which is what you want to write them in their normal component now is the same thing as saying uh now cf is com com comprised of this line right and this line is ix as current times reactance plus this line and this line we already know that this is v sine phi of phase angle so that means they are parallel and since parallel line are the same so we can also call this v sine phi arrow so this means that everything here is ix plus v sine phi arrow right this is same f so this is v sine phi arrow so that means that everything is if that is ix are we ready now that is um, ix ix plus v arrow sine phi arrow in square plus now of this is f and this is o of is comprised of i arrow i'm getting now i arrow plus from here to here is v arrow cos phi so that is v arrow cos phi arrow everything square so rearranging this in the way it is in your textbook it become vx vx right in the root of so we can just pick this component first and when i'm picking this component that will become i arrow plus like this side so we have finished deriving the equation we don't want to arrange it in a way that we look familiar square plus i x plus v arrow phi square also in your textbook we have vx final derivative to be equal to now this component here now we confess in your textbook so sometimes we like following the material square plus v arrow sine phi arrow plus i x everything square so this is the sending voltage it's called what descending voltage very easy so the next thing is the angle the angle of descending voltage so the angle of descending voltage can be calculated we already know from basic trigonometry that tan inverse of theta when finding direction is equal to y over x so the y as is here now it become tan inverse sorry theta is equal to tan inverse y over s so that means theta here will be equal to tan inverse our y as is is um, i x plus v arrow sine phi all over our x as is x i arrow plus v arrow cos 
Bye. Are you getting it now? Alright, so the next thing. Or you can do it like this. Just resolve this one to this side. So when resolving, you multiply by the angle. This is phi x. Phi x cos phi x. When you want to resolve this to this side, that will be vx, right? Cos phi s will be equal to everything in this side. So that will be v arrow cos phi arrow plus i arrow. So make this this object. So make uh, we have cos inverse uh, blah blah blah. So I think this is everything that is here. Okay, that is cos inverse of um, v arrow cos i arrow plus i arrow over vx. So I think this is everything that I said. Okay, um, voltage regulation. My God, there's no space my, to do voltage regulation now. For voltage regulation, we already know that voltage regulation is descending voltage, v arrow, descending voltage, vs minus the load voltage all over descending voltage times 100. And we already know this formula for descending voltage. Like the formula for descending voltage is this. So when we substitute it into this point, we have the expression for the voltage regulation. Also, there is something I want you to know. Now, also, we should know that Vx also is approximately or equal to V arrow. Are we getting it now? V arrow plus I arrow cos plus I arrow cos arrow plus I x sin arrow x. So why is this true? Let's just quickly do it before I just quickly analyze. Why is this true? If this side now is bending downward, it begins to get longer, right? According to our cycle. If we bend to this side, we have V arrow. So this line component is I, uh, I arrow cos arrow. And this one will be waiting I x sin arrow. So that is why if this Vs now start going down, going down, going down, get to this point, it will be equal to V arrow, which is V arrow, I arrow, which is this component, I arrow cos arrow plus i x sin arrow thank you very much for joining us make sure you hit the like button and share to your friends and loved one god bless you in jesus name amen